Hi there. Welcome to another edition of Equipping. I am your host, KJ Ajayi. Today, I want to speak to you about the characteristics of an uncircumcised generation. So circumcised means the breaking off the first skin of the body. Now, it was one of the tokens that God gave to Abraham. We understand that it's a symbol that in reality, within the, new, the context of the New Testament, circumcision is not the circumcision of the first skin, the male organ. It is the circumcision of the heart. A, an, a heart that is surrendered to God and that has been withered by the Holy Spirit so that is sensitive and able to give God pleasure. In this episode, I want to give you a number of characteristics, the same from the shadow, because the Bible tells us that the shadow is the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. In the book of Samuel, the Bible mentions the story of Eli and his two sons. These men were men in ministry and in service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But the Bible called them the sons of Belial. In other words, they were the sons of the devil. And invariably, the judgment of the Lord came upon them. Their father and themselves died in one day. What are some of the lessons we can learn from Ophin and Phineas? Quickly, let me read them to you. Number one, the absence of the fear and the horn of the Lord, or at the worst, a strange version of it. Men who do not honor God or who are not circumcised in their heart, one of the things you find out is that they do not fear the Lord, neither do they honor him, or they have a strange version of the fear of the Lord, which I call unholy familiarity. They claim that we are under the New Testament and we are under grace, therefore, they are not able to draw the dividing line. Like a young man will not hit his mother in the buttocks, saying that he's just playing with his mother, his mother should understand. These people trifle with the things of God and do not make a distinction between the holy and the common. Number two, they are without conscience even in the service of the Lord. Ophin and Phineas slept with women at the temple door, at the door of the temple. We have it today in records in many quarters sexual immorality going on. Understand that it is not the sin of these ministers that is the problem or the sin of these believers that is the problem. It is the carelessness with which they handle their repentance and the, uh, the arrant nonchalance with which they handle divine displeasure. It is important for us to know that the Bible tells us that God is love, but our God also is a consuming fire. Romans chapter 2 says, Do you not know that the forbearance of God is for repentance? But if you turn away, you are piling up for yourself wrath in the day of judgment. The third characteristic of an uncircumcised generation, there is no dividing line in ministry between what is theirs and what is God's. Number four, their feeling is more important than the instructions of God to them. Their obedience is not a priority, their comfort is. So we see Samson will say, she pleased me well. I'd rather have that woman that walk in the call of God for my life. Number five, they use God to achieve their ends. To them, God is a means to exploit not a lord to be surrendered to. So the sons of Eli took meat without giving proper regard to the order that the Lord had established. Number six, as ministers, they minister without a relationship with God. They prefer the power of God to his presence. They prefer his gift to character. Now these men are more interested in the demonstration of the supernatural, but they don't want to spend time in the place of prayer. They don't want to spend time fasting. They don't want to spend time humbling themselves before God. They just want to be notable. They want to be famous. Number seven, they don't learn from their faults or from their sins. When confronted, they call God's bluff or at most perform shallow repentance. We see that in the case of Eli. He got tired of God and he said, you know what? It is God. Let him do as he wills. He didn't say he is God. That scripture says he said, it is God. I don't know how a man comes to a point where he does not reverence God anymore, and he, use, he qualifies God with it as rigorous he. Number eight, they had a strong taste bud and admiration for worldliness than kingdom culture. And this is where I'm going to stop. I pray that the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name.